positive, then we do not deny them the opportunity to write. They can still write. But you can see the strict protocols that we adhere to in our schools. Just finally, to indicate achievements, we are proud that we are implementing the e-learning. We make use of the DHET support system for our Tibet lecturers, our, our training higher education provider, DCS, access to examination mainframe. I'm losing internet connection again. Maybe you need to wrap up completely. My second from last slide, Chairperson. Uh, we work with external service providers, the CETAs. So in that case, the MERCETA granted access to DCS accredited centers to register training interventions. Workplace approval was obtained from various CETAs in the process of accreditation. Um, that is part of our achievements, and I think the last slide deals with our priorities and our status. I think the one before that one. We have a site protocol with the Department of Higher Education. They have made funding available, still on slide 39. Funding has been made available for the training of a number of offenders over a three-year period. Uh, obviously, the training was disrupted, so it's taking us a little bit longer to reach all of those numbers. But um, there will be in total 1,112 offenders going through that program. Um, we have MOUs. We have 46 DCS TVET examination centers registered. And then in terms of our prior priorities, it's really for us to focus on our policies, we have aligned our policies with e-learning based on the challenges of COVID-19, but also based on the developments in education generally. In terms of sports, recreation, arts and culture, we have updated that policy because the two departments, um, Department of Sports, uh, combined with the Department of Arts and Culture, so that required us to also really look at our policies. So in terms of our priorities, in the last slide, it's really for us to get our updated policies approved as soon as possible, uh, now that we have aligned them to e-learning and also the requirements of industry. I can stop there, Chairperson. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I uh, think thank you very much. Uh, the presentation I must uh, just make the point that it was not easy to to follow and be with you all the time, given the your poor connection. Uh, and I hope members uh, would have tried their best. I think where they did not, I'm sure they will ask for those kind of explanations. Uh, thank you very much for that. Members, there you have the presentation from the department. I'm going to invite you uh, to interact with this uh, work. Uh, I'm recognizing Honorable Kola Nola, followed by Honorable Verna On, Velma Nivot, Namaste, Kojere. Um, those are the hands I have uh, for you. Thank you. Hola, the platform is Go ahead, Honorable Wala. The platform is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm, I'm not sure if you can hear me that right. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, let us welcome uh, this uh, 
presentation from the department which uh, outlines actually the progressive uh, initiatives that are uh, often are, are rehabilitated and brought back to communities to contribute most particularly into into the community. The first issue sir, that I wish to, to raise is uh, in terms of the presentation, I take it that uh, the highest qualification the department offers is the degree, which is the NQF level seven. Nothing beyond that uh, in terms of the presentation, sir. Uh, I'm not sure if that is correct or not. The second issue I wish to raise is the, the for, for the community to be able to assess particularly the work done as it relates to this uh, great initiative and the progress made. I think uh, when time allows, uh, the department can just share with the subcommittee on corrections the number of graduates produced in engineering since the resumption of this uh, education program in TCS. The number of uh, uh, graduates on business studies and all the relevant given programs that they offer in this great initiative. Uh, maybe uh, before the, uh, they can share with us, it will help us. Uh, to see the actual impact this uh, presentation is doing in our communities. The issue share about a decrease on enrollment. The development actually outlines what are the actual causes of uh, decline. But I Presenting the kind of a decrease of depression depression as part. How best do we we curb those uh, those uh, reasons for the decrease so that uh, we curb the decrease itself so that uh, we don't collapse this. Uh, it's a great initiative. The last issue Chair, is, the, is the, they are selling on sport, recreation, arts and culture. They are partnering with external uh, uh, stakeholders. I want to check what is the role of the uh, Department of Sport, Recreation and Arts and Culture in this uh, program, uh, uh, that is the S. we can, we can easily make a linkage between DCS and the National Department of Education as it relates to the qualifications, the curriculum, and other things. But when it relates to the sport, recreation, and arts and culture, we hear nothing of the contribution of the department towards this uh, initiative. All we hear is that uh, there is a partnership with external uh, uh, stakeholders. So, should we take it that uh, the Department of Sport, Arts, and Culture uh, has no contribution in this uh, DCS uh, uh, program. Uh, apologies for my voice, uh, I'm a bit feverish since election. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's not that really uh, uh, audible and loud as you may know it. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mola. We recognize that. Um, I'm going to depart on how we normally do it uh, because of the poor link from the department and uh, ask uh, Honorable Horn to come in and feel his uh, interactions with the department. Yes, thank you, Chair, um, good and good morning. Um, Chair, two issues from my side. The first is in terms of formal um, educational programs. One of the issues with which we as members are sometimes confronted is complaints by 
uh, inmates that they are precluded from enrolling in formal educational programs and then on upon further I want to say investigation or uh, not really investigation but let's say interrogation the reason seemingly then would be that in the department's view they are not uh, there for a long enough term um, so I would just want to hear from the department as to what the policy is um, what is the type of sentence an inmate must be serving before they ultimately will be allowed to, to enroll, specifically if one looks at the short courses that is contained in the report as well? Um, and what is then the distinction whether one specifically qualifies to enroll for a short course, um, even if you are do not serve a sentence of a, of a longer term. So that's the first issue, Jay. The second issue is around vocational training. Um, so it's good to see there on that specific slide, and, and I didn't get the number of the slide, but the 10 sites at which the department are awaiting of, of uh, 